We have a ton of news updates and information from Verizon and what they're going to be doing in the future with their company, the services, plans, their focuses. This is really extensive. So I got all the details on how this is going to impact you as a consumer and affect the competitive landscape, as well as investors out there. Okay, so Verizon really hasn't had the, the ammunition or the bullets to compete against the likes of their competitors when it comes to the network. And in some ways, that has kind of put them behind the eight ball in terms of the capacity on the network. Now that is kind of a thing of the past as they continue to build out their C-band millimeter wave and they create these new 5g use cases and they have these new offers home internet their value bundles with entertainment it's all kind of coming together so now they've got it going on and they've got it in spades we're going to talk about the capex here what the network's going to look like their focus this new entertainment thing they want to do and what they're going to be trialing so here we go verizon is going to be offering some kind of a new structure or suite of subscription services and, uh, of course, all of this to deepen the customer relationship, make them sticky, retain them, reduce churn. And with this newfound emphasis of 5G-enabled, you know, value plays to customers. So, you know, like things like the fixed wireless access to 5G home, uh, that's going to be a big focus of what they do. Obviously, this is going to continue. They spoke a lot about it in today's investor conference. A big area of focus as well as a big area for their growth. Now, when it comes to that... I guess we'll call it like the the entertainment bundle. Uh, they might be bringing Netflix to the table. I know they're going to be trialing some suite of characteristics and different options for you. Uh, they're going to include some new options. And they've talked about bringing in new players into this before. So it looks like that's manifesting itself. Uh, you know, just trying to expand the portfolio. And... Uh, you know, so be on the lookout for that as they trial it at the end of the month. Who knows what type of consumers are going to have that available to them and them trying it. Uh, they spoke to the prepaid wireless side, and they said, you know, basically that's going to be where they become price competitive. So visible, track phone brands, that's going to be how they compete in pricing. In terms of postpaid, the focus is still going to be premium. They will look to add value to make customers appreciate those things and like those things and want to move up to premium. Um, but that's important to note that that continues to be what they're emphasizing. Uh, 60% of devices are now on, are 5G compatible. So I know a lot of people were uh, kind of shocked by this when they hit 30% recently. Uh, I guess by the end of the year, they want to be at 60%. I'm not sure if that's end of this year or end of next year or at some point next year at the start of next year, but it, they made it sound like they want to essentially double the amount of handsets that are 5G enabled through this year. 55% uh, of customers looking to be on premium and limited, unlimited plans as that continues to be what they want to do, get people converted to the more expensive plans, increasing ARPU. So those two things, the devices and the plans go hand in hand. Some network stuff for you guys here as well. All right, so... Millimeter wave traffic is up 10%. No surprises. People are out more. Restrictions are pretty much falling, you know, <laughs> getting removed. So people are out and about to connect to the stuff. They're also expanding the build, right? So it all makes sense. 45% of Verizon's native tower sites have native fiber. Hashtag owners economics, right? Makes total sense. They are going to be deploying a full uh, execution of tower sites getting 10 gig fiber circuits. So pushing the millimeter wave C-band capacity, they'll be able to do that. In terms of Verizon Fios, the fiber product, moving forward, they will move towards 10 gigabit symmetrical. Be on the lookout for that if you're a business or residential use case where you can utilize it. Makes sense. They want to go 10 gig to towers, 10 gig of their native fiber, right? Uh, they are currently approaching 8 million customers, hopefully by the end of the year for Fios. I think that's their goal. They want to add 550,000 this year. I think that's the expectation. Uh, 69 new markets will be getting Fios, millimeter wave and C-band, low band, satellite connection. You know, they talked about what they're going to be doing the network. Uh, CapEx looks to be reduced, the CapEx intensity, by 2024 by 12%. So that means they're going to be getting more of an ROI, more return of investment. They're going to improve their revenue. And then I think what actually ends up happening is they're going to keep CapEx the same. I think it's going to be $17 billion flat 
for the foreseeable future, but they're making more money, right? So that means the intensity is going to decrease. I think they said from 14% to 12%. Fixed wireless access updates. Uh, we will be seeing a 5G standalone core in June operating that piece of the network. Network as a service is a big time focus for them. Uh, they want to have 11 million customers by 2025, uh, I guess, on the fixed wireless product. They are seeing an ARPU acceleration, average revenue per user. They're expecting $74. That's incredible. I mean, that's a huge boost because I think currently they're in the 50s, $50 range, maybe 52 bucks if I remember correctly. That's a huge boost, right? We're talking almost 40%, 50%. Um, or wait, they said 74 bucks. So, you know, uh, it's it's very sizable. I, I, think, I think when they were doing the math on this, if you're coming in, and I think the estimate was fifty dollars for ARPU, if you're going up to seventy four, going up twenty four bucks, right? Improving by forty to fifty percent is quite substantial. Uh, for business, the goal is to get one million subscribers by end of year, twenty twenty five, on the fixed wireless access, five G ultra wideband. The emphasis millimeter wave C band. They have mentioned that they will continue to offer the LTE product for business as well. I just think that that's hard to do without enough spectrum there. The focus is definitely C-band. Updates on N77 and C-band. The network upgrade rate is really high. They are estimating 175 million pops covered by the end of year. I think they're underselling that. I think they're going to overachieve. They're probably going to be approaching 150 million pops within the next month or two. There, there's a disconnect there. I think they're going to exceed 200 million pops by the end of the year. But they're aiming low, and I think they're going to over overhit that. So... Uh, one year ahead of schedule on the current build for N77. That's what they said. Ongoing negotiations to clear markets that are in the BC block. That's confirmed. Uh, I guess that's happening. So like Denver, Atlanta, that's going to be happening sometime this year. Uh, I think they're estimating somewhere between 30 to 40 markets will be seeing BC block C-band getting early clearance. So for those of you that are on the list of markets getting C-band clearance, in 2023, you may be one of the markets that's going to see early clearance and be able to capitalize on those builds. They're currently putting up gear. So that may be an indication that you're getting C-band early. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so there is a ton of stuff here. Your comments, welcome down below. You know, they've got share buybacks planned uh, for 2025. I'm guessing once the revenue really kicks up from all these heavy investments, they'll start to do some of that. That probably is music to investor ears. Um, they've got that plus play media, you know, media content stuff coming up, that trial service. CapEx is holding steady at $17 billion. That's good news. They're still investing in the network, not really slowing down. Now they got the bullets. Now they're doing it. This is going to be huge. Uh, the fixed wireless access, they want to be reaching 50 million households by 2025. Clearly a big emphasis. They want to push towards business as well business customers. There's so much here. I think we got to do a podcast tonight. We'll see if we can get some guests on there too. Uh, you guys tell me what you think of all these news. Let me know what you guys think of all those little bits and pieces. Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Um, maybe see you guys at the podcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.